but I must ask you about something that seems to affect virtually everybody, and that is uh, the, the state of insecurity in the land. Um, there are those who say that government has no role if it cannot guarantee the safety of the citizens uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think that speaks also to what you mentioned earlier about policing and the need for restructuring. But, uh, I mean, if we, if we take it from even Bielsa, you've had three attacks that have been recorded or reported in the last couple of weeks. The most recent being the helicopter pad attack. But before then, even you lost one of your aides who was uh, assassinated. That was the report, yeah, yeah, that he yeah. was assassinated. Mm -hmm. I use that to set the context for, it seems like, an epidemic of insecurity across the country. You have the headsmen, farmers, uh, clashes. You have the ongoing Boko Haram uh, crisis in the Northeast. You've got kidnappings, uh, armed robbery, and all of that. Uh, doesn't it give you cause for worry as one of the country's leaders? Well, first of all, uh, insecurity, criminality, brigandage everywhere uh, should be of concern to all. Um, you talked about uh, recent developments in my state. Yes. Yes. Um, even with the best of intentions and the best of security investment and atmosphere, uh, these things once in a while happen, as it has indeed occurred in my state. Uh, but from every assessment, from every agency, since I took over 2012 till now, as a combination of the investments we were making and the deliberate um, uh, leadership that is deployed and the mobilization of the people, uh, with the work of the security agencies themselves, my state um, has been regarded, uh, and everyone knows that it's one of the safest states in Nigeria. Uh, so clearly, it's, uh, my state uh, has become the the, the the epitome of stability, uh, even within the uh, volatile region, uh, the Niger Delta uh, region. But it's unfortunate that a uh, number of these things uh, keep happening. Um, yes, you talked about the cases of insecurity and breaches, uh, including very serious um, crimes, murders committed on a large scale um, uh, as a continuing pattern in the states, Taraba, Benue, Adamawa, Kogi sometimes, and a number of other states, and so on. All that is really harrowing. And let me say that all Nigerians and all people of goodwill should condemn what is going on. I shouldn't give anybody um, any happiness or satisfaction at all, except uh, the perpetrators. The people, yes, the people except the perpetrators. Uh, they seem to be happy doing carry now these pogroms, that is uh, actually pogroms, uh, exterminating whole families and clans and villages, and so on, uh, with little or no regard for the value of human lives. This is very sad. Um, and it's shocking that uh, in this country, we have degenerated so fast, uh, within the last uh, 10 years um, or so, about seven years down, uh, we've started, we are virtually getting used to hearing about suicide bombings in Nigeria. Can you imagine that? In our Nigeria, it's now the norm to see pictures of young children, now girls, boys, blowing themselves to pieces. Not in Afghanistan, not Pakistani, not in Pakistan, not in Iraq, not in any of the other troubled places that we used to hear that from, not in Palestine, in our Nigeria. It's very sad. Within the shot. And the human memory is configured in such a way that uh, because of the frequency of these incidents, somehow our sensibilities have been I've been, I've been dulled uh, that uh, in a way we're accepting that as a norm. People storm places of worship, mosques and churches, and kill people at will. And things like that. So you are right. The, the citizens and all of us feel concerned and should feel concerned and should condemn uh, uh, clearly these terrorist activities. Uh, there's no justification. 
Um, yes, I agree, governments exist. And that's why in Bielsa we take issue of law and order um, very seriously. But unless you first establish a secure and safe atmosphere, no government can do anything. There can be no government without law and order and security. Um, I believe that, and this is where these issues of restructuring and an examination, an honest examination of the strength and the efficacy. capacity and efficacy of the entire national security architecture should come in. We should have an honest discussion. Now, I believe that the security officers and men are trying their best. But are the structures and systems right? Have we given them the empowerment that they need without which they can't really function? There are so many structural um, impediments. And that's why Nigerians should not dismiss this issue of restructuring. You do so at the detriment, at your own peril, and at the peril of our country. We need to sit down and honestly ask ourselves whether we should not reorganize. Another word for restructuring is reorganization. I mean, so that a governor should take responsibility for day-to-day -day maintenance of law and order. And we create the systems that should provide for collaboration between the state forces and the federal. Yeah, and the federal and create the systems that will insulate the security commanders from political influence. You see, the most important, or let me say one of the most important public officials in every country are the security officials and the justice officials. Once these two elements are not right, if their appointments and their control and discipline and removal are politicized, if their funding and training and welfare and the morale issues are not addressed, we have a major challenge. So if you talk of insecurity, how many Nigerians have asked themselves how well equipped and well funded uh, are the police, which is a frontline agency? How long do you, does it take you to turn a civilian, an ordinary person, to a police officer. What is the cost? What form of training should the person have? What form of equipment? How do we take care of them? How do we fund police? And how do we control? Who gives control? Why should the Inspector General's appointment be at the mercy, at the pleasure? of a president, not this particular president, any president. Why? These, these are things that nations really take time to debate and discuss. One of the critical issues our founding fathers took pains to discuss extensively, both in this country and outside, when they were agreeing on the Nigerian nation, was the form of a country they agreed on a federal system. They talked about the policing system. They talked about the judicial system. Regions then had constitutions. Regions had police forces. Regions had courts. And people were talking about how taxes were paid to fund all of this. We have missed all of it. We have missed all of it. So we've got to go back. Yes, security issues. We condemn it. It shouldn't happen. The government should rise up. Those who control the coercive instruments of state should rise to the occasion. I believe that our officers and men are essentially good. They are Nigerians. They are Nigerians. But what influences are they under? What are the, what are the, how motivated are they? How well trained are they to respond to these and other, 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 other challenges? Especially now we are hearing that uh, these killers and terrorists may even be an invading uh, foreign, foreign force. We should be very concerned. And that's why I, I continue to make the case 
for people of goodwill who believe in this country to come together to address this essential problem. Not, not by way of accusing people and passing blame, no. Not by way of saying more or less people have died in this government than in the previous one. I think that is, that is quite frankly nonsensical. It's insulting. But we should look at the fundamentals of the problems. Why are these things happening? Why should any crime even take place? Because it's an indictment on all of us, on the country, you know, that people can come and do this kind of things and get away, and they are not caught, they are not arrested. If you can't prevent, then we should apprehend. And if you can't prevent, you don't have the intelligence to prevent, and you don't... By intelligence, you mean, of course, information. Oh, yeah, intelligence, information, and now technology as well. And then people, training, a lot of things, funding.